What up, Fisherman eighty three? Jackson Rocco, Mr. Gentile. Hi, John. Terry, how's it going, man? What is new? BS fans and Nick, how's it going? How you coming on your YouTube channel, Nick? Oh, great. Good deal, Eric. Glad you got it. What's everybody been doing today? I've been fishing. Surprise, surprise. I've been fishing. Turn my ringer off on my phone. Oop, I got some guys sending me photos. All right. Unplug Alexa so we don't get interrupted here. Braden, Braden's on. Were you late or was YouTube late? N5. Kada. I was late. I was uh, trying to locate something that I want to use for the show tonight. And I just found it right a minute late. Keep it up, Rocco, man. Just keep plugging away. I haven't shipped it yet, Jackson. Sorry, buddy. I'll get it out to you uh, this week, though. It's still safe and sound. Yeah, it wasn't YouTube. It was me. And I got several guys sending me photos. Big Double D. How's it going, man? Oh, Nick, nice. Nick caught about an eight-inch trout. Dude, that's a good photo, too. <clears throat> we'll show this to the guys while they're hopping on. Let's see where that's at. Check that out. Nick's trout. Yeah, Jackson, it didn't get lost. I just, um, I've been lazy. Okay, Braden, I'm going to show the guys your wrecked car tonight. So hopefully you can stay on before, uh, before I show that. So this is Nick and his trout. He's the one I was telling you guys he's about to start a YouTube channel. He's going to start his own fishing channel. Nice, nice, nice. Looking good. Looking good, Nick. Okay. Guess it was just Nick that sent me something. Hey, Joe Fishing. How you doing, man? Mr. Bass, how's everyone doing? It's getting skunked. Then switch to the Ned Rig. Right on. That'll do it for you. <clears throat> Although, I got skunked on the Ned Rig today. 
I did catch some fish. I'll tell you that story here in a little bit. But uh, the Ned rig isn't perfect. Good job. Outside World won his game today. Man, if you can't go fishing, a baseball is the next best thing. Good job, man. All right, Braden, I'll see if I can find your photo and get it up quick. It's been a while since you sent that to me. Uh, Braden. Here it is. <clears throat> okay. What do you call these sprint cars, Braden? Wanted to go fishing today, but my dad had a seizure. Dang. Sorry to hear that, Braden. From bad luck to worse. So this is Braden's uh, sprint car. He had a little uh, fender bender, I guess, in one of his races here a little while ago. So he sent, sent me about four photos here. I'll show them to you. There's that one. There's this one. Looks like a little bit of motor work needed there there's this one and this one i think this one shows the damage the best this one here BS Fins, do you plan on doing a tackle bag roundup like your favorite bag at 100, favorite under 75? Um, I hadn't thought about that, BS Fins, but maybe I will do something like that. I've still got a couple more bags coming out. Micro Sprints. Braden is a micro spinner, sprinter. What happened on this one here, man? How'd, uh, how'd it go bad? How'd it go wrong? Wheels to the ground works the best. <laughs> See, I know I know who this guy, and I already know he's an older, wiser man. G4 Outdoors. Hey, guys. This G4 Outdoors uh, guy has a channel. It's called G4 Outdoors. And guess what? He lives just down the road from me. And he does his fishing videos on the same, one of the same lakes I fish called Smithville Lake. So just out of the blue, we bumped into each other. Christopher Shoe, right on. We can start. Christopher's here now. Yeah, so G4 Outdoors, he's more of a cat fisherman. And uh, he does all kinds of different equipment reviews catfish videos, crappie, and then his partner is a bass fisherman. So if you guys are looking for another, uh, you guys are looking for another fishing channel, another outdoors channel, go check out G4 Outdoors. G4 saying, tons of bass up here at Smithville. I probably need to go fish it then because I hate that lake except for the spring. And uh, I usually avoid it until I hear it's on fire. So G4 Outdoors, if you are catching them on Smithville, I guess I better get up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> G4's YouTube partner, not life partner. <laughs> right on. Uh, he does this hilarious rap, fishing rap. Man, you guys got to see that. 
I wonder if I could show that somehow. I did on another. Let me see if I can find G4's YouTube channel, outdoors uh, YouTube channel, and show you guys this their rap. It's hilarious. All right. Which one is it, G4? What's it called? Um, it's got to be one of your highest playing. Let's go fishing. No, that's not it. Let me see if he tells me. Gone fishing. All right, it's called gone fishing. Let me see if I can find it here. Gone fishing. He's got tons of videos in here, so. Your thumbnails look great, man. You're you're really good at uh YouTube thumbnails. All right, let me see if I just type in gone fishing next to you. There we go. All right, I got to All right, guys. Watch this video. I'm going to share it on the screen here dudes this is hilarious let me see if i can get to it here all right here it goes oh my god let's go fishing now i got all my rods and reels and they've been loaded in my truck i had to head to randy's and now and he's like, what the f***? Where are we going? Where are we headed? What the heck is going on? I don't know, just grab your guns. I'm in the mood, make a song. Now we're headed down the road, and I'm to my chagrin. And Randy said some stupid stuff. Uh, like, you feel like again? That's a horrible idea. Now it escalated quickly. The only thing that works is spit filling some sunny super stick. Kiss the, the bass, bass is the crappie or the cats. It doesn't matter. Because our message gets across when the shot is Thanks, G4, for permission. We all point and stare and we laugh. No remorse because the situation guaranteed to end in a divorce. Now we're hearing fish stories that we know straight face because all I know is fish here is this in a way. We're going fishing. Yeah, we're at the lake. We're going to catch big fish. Every day we're going fishing. And you know it's true. <laughs> what up, Jan? How about that, guys? And you know what? He's absolutely right. There is no fish in that lake most of the time. That was hilarious. Great video, G4 Outdoors. So if you guys, uh, <laughs> guys want to check out a fun channel, man, 
The G4 Outdoors dudes, they got it going on. Can we get a remix with Mr. Bass dropping some lines? Oh my gosh, man. I am not a rapper, I can tell you that. Have I ever been deep sea fishing? Sorry, I have not. In fact, I had the opportunity to go deep sea fishing down in Southern Florida, and I decided to go bass fishing. So I probably messed that up, but I had a great time bass fishing in the Florida Keys. Yeah, man, if you guys really fish Smithville Lake, you would not believe how much of what he's saying on that video is true. It's hilarious. Hey, Jan, how you doing, man? All right, what we got going on tonight here? Uh, oh, I was going to remind you that the week, the, the midweek live stream is on Wednesday night now, not Thursday. Wednesday night. So, in fact, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of bumping around the Wednesday night live stream, uh, kind of testing it out to see what time's the best. I did seven o'clock last week. I'm going to try six 30 this week. See what happens there. And I'm going to be giving away a monster bass multi-species box on Wednesday night. The fish in the ocean are strong fighters. I did it for one day and was worn out reeling in fish. Yeah. I've seen those videos of those guys trying to reel those fish in. Pretty crazy. Mr. Bass, what kayak do you use? I'm thinking of getting the Sea Stream Angler 120 PD later this year. Yeah, I was in my kayak today, actually, Eric. Um, I got the Hobie Pro Angler 14 footer, and I love it. Uh, it's, it's just great. I've had three fishing kayaks. I had a Jackson Kusa. And uh, before before they invented pedal drive, uh, I hear their pedal drives are pretty good, but I've never tried a Jackson pedal drive. And then I uh, had a native Titan, native watercraft Titan 13.5, so almost 14 feet. Another great boat, super stable. And then the Hobie PA-14. So... You got to kind of ask yourself what you're going to do, what your plan is fishing in your kayak. Are you going to do like these guys do that live offshore and they actually go out in the ocean and fish? Are you going to fish big lakes, small lakes? Are you going to fish rivers and streams, ponds? And that matters because that's going to help you decide what kind of boat to buy. Like I buy, I, I'm in uh I like, I like small fishing like ponds and, and stuff a lot, but I also fish big lakes. So I wanted a stable enough boat that it could handle big water. And I also want a really stable kayak so I can stand and fish in. And a lot of these kayaks say they're stable enough to stand and fish in, but you need to try it out on the water before you buy it. Because... There is nothing like experience. There's nothing like trying it out and feeling it for yourself. Uh, so let me tell you why I switched from the Titan to the Hobie. I had several reasons. One was the Titan is super stable, and I wanted super stable, so I love that about it. But the Titan had a center console in between your feet. And what I didn't like about the center console is a lot of times when you're standing and fishing, you need to turn to the right or turn to the left or even turn backwards to fish. And that console was always in the way of my feet. And every time I turned, the console was in my way. So the beauty, beautiful thing about the Hobie is the deck that you stand on in front of your boat is completely open. There's nothing in the way, nothing, nothing at all in your way to stand up and fish. 
So if you don't want a Hobie, it is a very expensive boat. If you're looking for more economical boats, I still recommend you think about, are you going to stand and fish? And if so, will the boat you're thinking about buying really, really do that for you? Now there's other guys who are purists and they just want to paddle and they care more, care more about paddling and the way the boat tracks and the speed of the boat. And if that's the case, then you need a narrower boat. The narrower the kayak, the faster it travels, generally speaking, and the better it will track. Narrow and long will track better. Uh, Christopher says, try the Evoke 125. Uh, in, in any case, uh, if you're going to get a kayak and fish, my opinion is it absolutely needs to be a pedal drive. It absolutely does. Um, okay, I'll take a look at that, Eric. Um, if you if you uh, all right, here's the kayak he's thinking about getting. Let's see if I I got it. Hold on a second. I got to pick the screen to share here. All right. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. He's thinking about the C stream. Okay. So just kind of from me looking at it and all I can tell you is what I would want, right? I would say, uh, well, you've got the console right in the middle. So trying to turn sideways, it's not that you can't do it. I think it would be harder to do. Um, you got the pedal drive and that's critical. The pedal drive makes fishing unbelievable. It's fantastic. And you have rod holders on that thing. Okay. It's got tracks. It's got tracks on it. So you could install rod holders on it. Looks like it's got a couple of horizontal rod holders. Maybe looks like a pretty good boat and it's got a pretty defined bow. So it probably cuts through the water nicely. Check this out. He's got the Mr. Bass sticker on the back of his car. Sweet. Nice. Right on. Cool. Let's see what other people are saying. Just thinking over here. Why not a bass buggy? Or kayaks a fad. Okay. I've actually had bass buggies, uh, G4, and bass buggies, if you guys don't know what a bass buggy is, it's kind of like a rectangular plastic boat that has two seats on it. And if you're just fishing around ponds, I think the bass buggy works fine. You can mount a trolling motor to it, especially if you want to fish together and sit side by side. The bass buggy, no problem with that. But what I found, the beauty of the kayak is it's so maneuverable. It's so easy as a single fisherman to maneuver around. And uh, hands down, a kayak, a kayak is not a fad, dude. It is, it is here to stay. If it's a fad, it's probably one of the strongest growing fads in the in, a, in the in the country because uh, it's getting more and more popular. It's way more affordable than a bass boat, and uh, it just works great. Mr. Bass, you're not going to believe it, but I was able to get my Mega Bass Ice Slide back. It was still stuck in the same spot. Oh, congratulations, man! A few days ago, if you weren't on, Matthew told us that he lost his Mega Bass Ice Slide Glide Bait, which is an expensive, expensive lure. Three days later, he went back and it was still there. Nice. This is an Ice Slide, if you're, if you're wondering. It's a big bait. 
Now, speaking of getting big baits stuck, I talked about this last time and I'm going to talk about it again because you need some sort of a lure retriever. If you're going to be a swim bait fisherman, you need a lure retriever. And I showed you guys these I bought. The Toothy Fisherman Retriever. I got a giant one here for big old swim baits off the boat. And then here's a smaller one that you can get used from the bank. These lure retrievers are essential equipment. you got to get one. You don't have to get this brand if you don't want to. I mean, I, I like these quite a bit, but lure retrievers, dudes, essential equipment, especially when you're throwing $100 lures or more. You got to get that back. Dude, Matthew, you lucked out. Good job. As he says, the fishing guys were watching over him. <coughs> yeah, this is another reason. That's a that's a good point. There are a lot of electric motor lakes, or in uh, up here where I'm at, there's a lot of conservation lakes that have. They may not be electric motor only, but they have horsepower restrictions, like nine or ten horse at the most max so you can't get your big boats in those water waters unless you remove the prop so another reason for for kayaking okay this must be a kayak that uh, you're talking about Christopher the renegade renegades coming next Tried the Whopper Plopper yet? <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, let me flip this light on a second so you guys check this out. <laughs> I was just getting some of my Whopper Ploppers ready. How many of you guys throw the Whopper Plopper? It's a little early for topwater fishing here right now. We got, I got quite a few of them. Got to love the Whopper Plopper. Whopper Plopper 60, I've not tried. I've heard, I've heard mixed reviews about those 60. Some guys like it, some don't. It makes a different plopping noise, apparently, than the other ones. Where's the second PB rat you're talking about right here? I took it out on the lake today. I was actually going to mess around with it on the lake, but the wind was blowing so hard that it just didn't make any sense to fish a wake bait in rolling waves. So that's where it's at. It's it's uh it's in my truck actually. Real life. Does the your pedal drive get caught in the grass or weeds? Okay. Good question, real life. And this is why I switched. Well, another one of the reasons why I switched to the Hobie. The Hobie Mirage Drive um solves the problem with the props getting caught in grass and weeds. Uh, the, the Hobie Mirage Drive are fins that uh, basically go back and forth in the water. Let me show you what, what a Mirage Drive looks like. And... Uh, the beauty of these fins is that uh, they don't, uh, they're, they're fins. So they're like fins uh, uh, that, that flap back and forth. And you can, they get surrounding grass. Excellent. You can, you can uh, actually 
maneuver your boat in super shallow grass. Just great with this uh, Mirage Drive. These uh, fins that you see, they do this. They do this as you're pedal paddling in the water. And then when you get in uh, really shallow water, you can hold those fins flat up against the bottom of your boat. And uh, it keeps you from getting hung up and, and caught in the grass. Um, there, in my opinion, there is no better pedal drive if you have a lake that's got tons of grass. The Mirage Drive, 100%, is the best product out there. No question about it. Yeah, you got Matthew saying you can go over. Uh, hey, Machak, how you doing, buddy? Uh, you're right. Uh, these are kick-up fins. And uh, if those fins, if you're going over a log or a rock and those fins uh, hit that log, they just bounce up out of the way and then they'll come back in place. Christopher Shue, dude, I love your box. I'm going to do a separate video on it, but I've actually got it right here. I showed it to some of the guys on one of the live streams, but Christopher Shue sent me a box of, of lures. Check it. He sent me the Bruiser Cinco, which is called the Big Stick. How many of you, and how many of you guys have fished the Big Stick? I fished lots of uh, I fished lots of stick baits, but never the Bruiser Big Stick. Looks pretty good. He sent me a Stanley spinner bait, the Vibra Wedge. I know this is the real deal. Stanley has been making really good spinner baits for a real long time. He also sent me Yee -hee! wiggle wart. Can't go wrong with a wiggle wart. Here's something I've never tried before. Uh, he sent me the Molex Super NATO Baby. What do you guys think of this? That looks like a sexy shad color. It's got a hook right here. It's got two hooks, like a little frog, but then it's got a square bill, a square bill on it. What do you think of that? Here's another sweet. This here, I can tell you, is an excellent, this is going to be an excellent Drop shot bait, net baits, contour worm. This is a really good natural color too. Yeah, BS fins, it looks like a crank with frog hooks and a tail. I know, it does. It's like a combination, it's like a combination frog and crank bait. Have you actually fished with this, Christopher? Then he sent me Andy's old school jigs. I like Andy's jigs. This is a rubber skirted jig right here. And I talked with you guys about rubber skirts. And rubber skirts, uh, you need a few of these in your box. Rubber skirts give you a different action in the water. They're really more lifelike. Um, they're... A lot of the new jigs aren't made from living rubber. They call this living rubber. They're made from uh, synthetic materials. But you definitely need uh, jigs, some jigs with rubber, living rubber. And you guys know how I like swim bait fishing. He sent me the bio minnow from Fish Labs. This looks like a really good color. It's called 
I don't know what color it's called. Doesn't say. This will catch them, though. Guaranteed. How about that, man? Christopher Shu, a subscriber. He just like, I'm going to hook you up, dude. Out of the blue. How nice is that? I'm amazed by guys who will do that kind of stuff for me. Appreciate it, Christopher. That was awesome. You got to try the rebound stick from Depths. If you like stick baits, this lure, you can do like 10 different types of rigging with it. Has a really awesome action, especially wacky rig. I will check it out, Matthew. I've got a few depths lures. I mean, I've got their glide baits and stuff, but I do have a couple of their soft plastic lures, but I don't have a lot of them. Yeti Whisperer made it. Nice. What's the bass catch count, Mr. Bass? It is, funny you asked, 93 out of 1,000. I've not broken 100. In fact, today I was a little nervous. I didn't think I was even going to break one because... Um, <laughs> it, it was tough. In fact, I was going to talk to you guys about this. Uh, I had uh, a little fishing fun today. And uh, I went fishing with my buddy, uh, Dean. I don't think he's on the live stream here. I don't see any text from him or anything or any comments. And he's the guy in one of my videos that uh, I showed you his kayak, uh, his new kayak. But he and I went to a lake today, and like I said, the wind was super crazy, and uh, we could not get any bites. And I, I took my fish finder on my kayak, and all the fish were suspended out deep. And uh, it didn't matter what we threw, we couldn't get them to bite. And I couldn't, I probably could have got them to bite a jerk bait if the wind was calmer, but the wind was blowing so hard. You couldn't position the boat. Your boat would blow over the fish too quick. And uh, trying to throw a jerk bait in super rough, windy water is just dumb. It's bad. Hey, congratulations, Simon. First bass today. Nice. Did you, did you take a picture of it? You got to take a picture of your first bass of the year, man, even if it's a dink. But if it's not a dink, that's even better. So after a few hours of that, we decided to load up the kayaks and go back to Dead Dog Pond and see if we could catch some fish there. But we had two solid days of rain. The water got super muddy and we got out there and it was super, super slow. And I tried everything. I tried a shaky head. I tried a Ned rig. I tried a crankbait. I tried, I tried a lipless crankbait. I tried fishing a grub. I tried the dark sleeper. And Dean and I were kind of in the uh, deep side of the pond trying to catch fish because this pond is full of grass. Super thick, crazy grass everywhere. And uh, so uh, we just assumed the shallow, I've been on the shallow side and it's really hard to fish the shallow side, really hard. So we avoided the shallow side. And finally, after not catching any fish, Dean went over to the shallow side and he threw the dark sleeper up around a lay down and he caught a fish and then he caught three fish. So he had three fish on and I hadn't caught anything. That's always painful when your buddy's catching them and you're not. So I took out my dark sleeper again. I had been, like I said, I'd been fishing with it. Took out my dark sleeper. 
and I threw it into a shallow spot way, way back, crazy shallow. And I caught my first fish of the day and I'm going to show it to you. How about that? Five pounder. Dean had a scale and we weighed it. It's just a little over five pounds. That's a dark sleeper fish. I'm telling you. They like those dark sleepers. So, uh, I continued to catch them on the dark sleeper and then I alternated between the dark sleeper and the chatter bait and I caught eight fish today and I lost about five in that grass. Here was the crazy thing about it. You had to throw your lure and as soon as it hit the water, you had to immediately reel to keep it just above the top of the grass. And if you could keep it above the top of the grass, you could get a bite. But as soon as you dropped it down and it hit the grass, you weren't going to get any bites. So it was tough. Oh, Christopher Shoe. What's my favorite color chatterbait? Well, um, it depends on where I'm fishing. This is funny because so many of you guys say, hey, what's your favorite this or your favorite that? And it's a good question. But the answer is always the same. The answer is, it depends. <laughs> That's always the answer. It depends. And the way, uh, the reason I say that is, uh, I don't care what color I'm fishing with the dark sleeper. I want the color that works. Dalen, how you doing, buddy? Glad you made it. So, for example, uh, if they're biting a white chatterbait, that's my favorite color. If they're biting a bluegill color chatterbait, that's my favorite color. If they're biting an orange one, that's my favorite color. So that's uh, that's the answer there about favorite colors. Uh, now, if if you were just to say which color do you think looks the coolest, I really like that orange colored uh, jackhammer. I think it looks awesome, especially with a similarly orange colored Zacco trailer. But I really don't care. I want the best color that catches fish. I also like that Brett's bluegill color. I think it's an awesome color on the jackhammer. But like today, um, I was throwing the, the red one, and I didn't really get bit on the red one. And then I switched to the white one, and I was started getting bit on the white one. So guess what? My favorite color today was the white one. What's Christopher Shoe saying? White minnow caught me a seven two. Bam. See, that's another way to have a favorite. Do I have a dark sleeper handy? Well, I've always got dark sleepers. Uh, I might have to run to my tackle room though. Uh, if you guys want me to go uh, get, my, get a uh, dark sleeper, to show it to you. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just throw show you one on tacklewarehouse.com. That's that's just as easy. Dark sleeper. Here it is. Gotta share. Share my There it is, the dark sleeper. This is the color I was fishing today, right here, Wakasagi. 
Wakasagi was catching them. I also was throwing a, another color. See if I can find it. Uh, may have gone past it. This is it. Mutsugoro. I was fishing Mutsugoro today, too. There's something about the action of these baits, man. They work great. You do have to know how to fish them, and you have to be patient. But my buddy Dean, he's a believer now. Today was his first dark sleeper fish. And he believes in them now. So that's what they look like, G4 Outdoors. <laughs> Christopher room. Wa Christopher wants me to go to the bait room. All right. Do they come in different weight sizes? They absolutely do. They come in a, uh, let me show you. I know they come in three quarter, half ounce, one ounce. There you go. Quarter, three eighths, half, three quarter, and one ounce. So come in a lot of different sizes. The size that I throw the most is the half ounce. But I throw the three quarter quite a bit. I don't usually throw anything lighter than the half. But today would have been a good day to throw a really light one because I had to keep it above that grass. The second it hit the water, I had to reel as hard as I could to keep it from getting caught in the grass. Now my buddy Joe here, he fishes the he fishes these as well and he fishes this mag draft. The mag draft is a great lure too. Let me show you that one. See if it'll come up here. Yeah. These are bigger. These are considerably bigger. But they, they are great. Now, the freestyle doesn't come with a hook. But they have uh, ones that come with a built-in hook. And I throw that a lot. Um, this one here. This one here, they don't show it, but where you see this little uh, uh, hook hanger at the bottom of the chin of the lure is where the uh, there it is. There's a, there's a view of the hook. It, it's a it's a really clever design because this hook is attached to a swivel, and it goes up inside this slot, and there's a magnet that holds the hook in place. And when the when your fish uh, eats this lure, that uh, hook then easily just pops right out. And then it takes the leverage away from the fish and helps you hook up more. The mag drafts are pretty sweet. Here's a few different colors to show you. They got really good details on their color patterns. Yeah, so Ma Matthew's talking about the mag slowl, and it's a mag draft, but uh, the the difference between the mag slowl and the regular mag draft is uh, it's designed for cold water, and the action of that lure is a little more of a tight more subtle movement in the water than the regular mag draft. But if you look at a picture of it, it looks almost the same. But it does have a different action. And the other thing it has is it comes with a, a feather on the treble hook where the regular mag draft does not come with a, with a feather. 
the Mag Slowl does. So you can get them in a five inch, a seven inch, and a nine inch. And I think the Mag Draft, you can get in even bigger ones than that. Uh, I didn't look on there before, but yeah, 10 inch. I think you might can even get a 12 inch. I've got some 10 inchers, but I don't have anything bigger than the 10 inch. It's a great swim bait. MB Gizzard is his favorite color. And Trout just picked up the knockoff Berkeley Chapo 90 Perfect Minnow. I've been catching them here on the Beast Coast Miyagi Swimmer. Okay, uh, John Smith. The answer to that question depends upon where you live and what the bait fish look like. So you're in Canada. Um, if you got a lot of perch, if you got a lot of perch in your waters up there, that's what I'd get. I'd get a perch colored one. Uh, they have a perch color here. They call it perch. I guess the Japanese name for perch is perch. If I were in Canada and I knew that there was a lot of a lot of perch forage in the water I was fishing, that's what I'd get. But it really depends. Oh, I didn't show you guys this. Sorry, I forgot. I'm not. Don't have the screen on. There it is. Perch. You have a lot of pumpkin seed, huh? Mr. Bass, can you use it up to summertime and fall? Are you talking about the uh, dark sleeper? You can fish it year round. <laughs> Perch is an American color. <laughs> yeah, good lures for sure. Man, we got off on a tangent there. That's okay. That's what we like. We like talking lures. Tackle. For sure. So my buddy Joe went out to a lake next to me, and he was catching them today, throwing that uh, bigger swim bait, I believe. What bait fish are in... I don't know what outside world's asking there. Sorry, I don't. I don't think I quite. Uh, Jan, you missed us talking about the dark sleeper. We've been talking mag drafts, mag slows, mag freestyle, dark sleepers, and then uh, we even got guys throw in a couple of other, like the Beast Coast Miyagi Swimmer. Is that a tackle warehouse? If it is, I'll show you what it looks like. Beast Coast. Yagi Swimmer. Here it is. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see this. All right, I would not call this... Uh, this is the Miyagi Swimmer that... Uh, N5 KDA was talking about. Now, I would not call uh, this a uh, a uh, mag draft uh, imitator. It's very different. But what this is really, really similar to is that crazy lure that Steve Kennedy uh, throws that is no longer made and there's several knockoffs made now uh boom boom makes one of them with uh optimum baits this kind of profile and pattern with the tail probably is a great fish catching swim bait n5 kda says that's what he likes to 
catch fish with, and he's been catching them. So this is a good option too here, guys. It's probably cheaper um, than the Mega Bass because the Mega Bass ones are just really expensive. Here's a good Canadian color right here, John Gill. A dirty perch. That color would work really good up in the northern lakes, in the uh, um, Lake St. Clair, Champlain, uh, all those northern fisheries. And I'm sure in Canada, that color would work excellent as well. Let's see what else we got here. Thanks, Christopher Shu, dude. Have a good night. Appreciate it, man. Super chatting. He is helping me out. Appreciate it. I found them because of Debo. Okay, I don't know what he's talking about there. How much are these? How much are the... Uh, this one that I got on the screen, the Beast Coast, they are six, they're like seven to eight dollars for a three pack. Now, the thing you got to think about with these kind of baits, though, they're big lures. Uh, they're almost five inches long, which is not a big deal, but you got to have the right hooks for these things. Uh, so don't just go buy a swim bait. Make sure you understand what kind of hook you need before you go buy a swim bait. Monster Bass. Monster Bass is paying me back. Thanks, dude. Speaking of monster bass, I told you guys uh, on my on our weeknight uh, on the weeknight uh, chat on the weeknight live stream, I'm going to be giving away one of my one of my uh, multi species boxes. I'm giving this one away, which is kind of painful. Because there's some really good stuff in here. I kind of hate to lose. But this is the perfect time of year, springtime. Just like if you guys saw my last video uh, where I was fishing on Dead Dog Pond. I think it was called Surprised by Crappie at Dead Dog Pond. I was fishing bass baits. And I caught a giant crappie with my shaky head. So then what did I do? I went through my box looking for crappie lures. And I usually always have crappie lures with me so that I can catch bluegill, panfish, uh, especially sometimes the bluegill and the crappie will be much, they'll be biting way better. So I'm going to show you again real quick what's in here just to give you an, a, an idea. We're talking swim baits. Hey, these kind of swim baits work. They're great. And the great thing about this box is it's got bass lures in it. It's got crappie lures in it. So let me show you bass lures. Great bass lure here. This is the uh, baby brim color and the 4.4 inch finesse swimmer. I guarantee you if I fished with these today, uh, just like I fished the dark sleeper, I'd have caught fish on them. Then you got these tech bait Cinco worms, heavy, heavy salt. Another great springtime lure, a Cinco style bait. Then you got a jerk bait. Just like I was saying today, if the wind had been down, I would have been throwing a jerk bait. It's the perfect... Perfect time of day for that. Perfect time of year. And then right around the co corner, the sugar buzz. The Strike King sugar buzz. Buzz bait. 
So look at that. All these bass lures in the multi-species box. Amazing. But then you got these, these uh, panfish lures in here. You got the little grasshopper bait. It's called the crick hopper. This is a little crankbait that you can use for panfish. And also bass would hit that as well. Then you got the Bobby Garland pile driver, live minnow color, and a couple of Roadrunner uh, crappie style lures. So that's what I'm giving away on Wednesday night. And uh, that's a sweet box, man. That's got a ton of great lures. Jeff, thanks for hopping on, dude. Good to see you, man. Kick your bass is here too. Cool. Very nice, very nice. All right, there was something else I was going to show you guys. Oh, I was going to show you a $1,000 wiggle wart. How about that? Thousand dollar wiggle wart. Let me show you a picture of this. I gotta find it on the screen. Gotta find it on the screen here. My wiggle warts. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Now I gotta share this with you guys. I'm going to show you this wiggle wart that sold on eBay for $1,023. Chrome tab, photos. Check that out. Storm wiggle wart V84 Oikawa mail. New in box, 27 bids, $1,023.23 plus $5 shipping. Dudes, check that out. <laughs> kick your bass. You would be out of your mind to fish that thing, kick your bass. If you spend a thousand dollars on it, because these things get hung up and you lose them, you will lose them. So, thousand dollar Oikawa wiggle wart. Rather have a kayak, a eh, Joe fishing. That's funny. So, check this out. <laughs> Look familiar? Oikawa. That's what it looks like, boys and girls. Now, you're probably thinking, <laughs> you're probably thinking, did you pay a thousand dollars for that? No, I did not pay a thousand dollars. Yes, I did notice the, the gender symbol. Um, Here's why I did not pay $1,000. I'll tell you what makes this a $1,000 lure. Sealed in package. This is the ones that are sealed in the package that uh, are uh, with this red label. That's what makes them so valuable. <laughs> if you buy them out of the package, like I bought this one a few years ago, 
out of the package, they're still a hundred bucks or so, or 150 bucks. But for some reason, these collectors, Red Label, Red Label is the oldest. Well, there's there actually was a a different package before the Red Label, but the Red Label is considered one of the oldest packages, and to find it sealed in the box is very rare. That's why somebody was willing to pay a thousand twenty three dollars. Dalen, who buys something and then never opens it? A lot of people, Dalen. A lot of people buy stuff and they never crack it open because they don't want to, they don't want to ruin the value. If he broke it open, his thousand dollar lure would be worth about $150, maybe 200 at the most. So that's why. Pretty crazy, huh? Hey, Barker's still at 10 killer. Caught your PB smallmouth. You got any pictures? We need to see it, man. Hey, Mr. Bass, if you want to fish your big swim baits deeper or near brush or a rock, things like that without getting snagged, look up on YouTube, Deep Tracer Ryugi. Okay, I will check that out, man. Yeah, well, this is the thing, BS Fins. When a person's willing to pay $1,000 for a bait, you can easily charge them five bucks for shipping. They're going to pay it. It does seem ridiculous that the person selling doesn't just send it for free. But they know, man, if this dude will pay a thousand bucks for a lure, he'll he'll also pay five bucks to ship it. How many original warts are in your inventory? Um, I don't know. Kick your bass. Uh, it's not that I would don't mind sharing it. Uh, I don't know how many I have. I, I probably ought to count sometime. I, my guess is I've probably got. Uh, 75 or maybe a hundred. I don't know though. Yeah, Eric, you're right. Look, trading cards. Some trading cards go for 10,000 or a hundred thousand and they keep them sealed in a wrapper. Why buy the lure? It needs to be used to catch a fish. Well, you definitely could do that. You could take your thousand dollar lure and chuck it out there. Who knows? Maybe it would catch a thousand dollar fish. You never know. It could, it just could be, it could be the winner. <laughs> yep. A lot of money for a crankbait. Even I won't pay that. I will not do that. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> kick your bass. No, <laughs> she knows she's seen how many I've got, but, uh, I don't know. I've, I've not really inventoried them. I probably should. All right. Let's uh, do a question or two for our spin to win. Uh, cause we've already got Man, we're already over an hour. We haven't we haven't spun the wheel at all. All right. So, in case you're new to the channel, this is our spin to win wheel. I will ask you a question about the channel or about fishing. I need to figure out a way to uh, get my screen out of the way. Um, I'm going to ask you a question about fishing fishing related stuff about the Mr. Bass channel, stuff like that. First one to get the correct answer in the live stream gets to spin the wheel. If you land on uh, one, you can, you win one lure, two, you win two lures. Mr. Bass is jackpot. You win three lures. 
If you land on the X, you win nothing. If you land here, you win the Lucky Tackle Box Panfish Box. I got to get rid of this thing. Uh, if you land on the Angel, you win a lure, and uh, you get to pick someone in the live stream who has commented, and they win a lure as well. And if you land on the greatest fisherman of all time, KVD, I got the KVD crate over here that is full of KVD lures, Strike King lures mostly. And you win one lure out of the KVD crate. After the Lucky Tackle Box has been won, this becomes a red X. So that is the deal. Here we go. First question of the night. I, th I think first question of the night, I will do my I will do my um my baseball question. For those of you that don't know, I like uh silly baseball hats. You can find silly baseball hats in the minor leagues. And uh so I will usually wear a different um, minor league baseball hat, and you get to guess the team. The first one to tell me the team wins. So what I'm looking for in this answer is not the name of the hat. In fact, I'm going to tell you the name of the hat uh, on this one so you don't even have to worry about that. Uh <clears throat> But the name of the team, the city and the name of the team. So, for example, if it were a, a major league team, the major league team in my town is Kansas City Royals. So that's how you answer the question. It is not the Army West Point Black Knights. Good, good that you know that. Uh, they do not have a minor league team, as far as I know. All right. Are you guys ready? I got to step out of the screen and put the hat on. Here we go. All right. Here it is. Here's the hat. This is the steamed cheeseburger hat. What team? What team? I'll try to turn this back hat off. You might can see the colors better. I don't know. Yep, the steamed cheeseburger hat. It is not the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Good guess, though. Nick Gurley got it right. Jan was close, and so was A. Joe. But I, if you remember, I said, you got to give me the full name of the city and the full name of the team. And it is the Hartford Yard Goats. This is their steamed cheeseburger hat. So nice job, Nick. You are a winner. <laughs> The old steamed cheeseburger hat. I mean, come on. Who doesn't love a good steamed cheeseburger? You are close, Jan. You missed the goat. You missed the goat. All right, Nick. You get to spin, dude. All right, let me fold this down. Are you ready? Spin to win. Here we go. Gotta love a team cheeseburger. One. Okay, Nick, do you want a lure from the miscellaneous bucket, a hard bait, or a soft plastic? Minor league teams have way better hats than me. I agree with you, Ajo Fishing. Way better. 
All right, Nick wants a hard bait. In case some of you guys haven't seen, these are my baits. This is the terminal tackle miscellaneous bucket. And here's the hard bait bucket. All right. All right. This is from Bait Labs. I think they I think they call it Bait Labs. B8 Bait Bait Labs. The ultimate strike baits. And this is a jerk bait. I'm trying to it's called the Dizzy Diver and this color is called Hellhound. Nice. bait lab and uh that came out of a monster bass box i'm almost positive the bait lab busy diver all right congrats nick you are a winner all right let's do another question okay All right. Believe it or not, this is a question I had set aside and you guys already already took me down this rabbit hole tonight on the live stream. So you guys should be able to answer this fairly quick. Name three. You got to name three, not one or two, but three mega bass swim baits. Go. Three mega bass swim baits. Okay, that's only one, John Smith. And you gotta list them all three together. I can't go back and read your name three different times. You gotta list them all together. All right, Fisherman 83's got it. He's the first. Dark Sleeper, I Slide, and Mag Draft. You are right. Good job. That is that is correct. I will I, I am letting I slide slide. It is technically a glide bait, but it falls in the swim bait category. So congratulations. And Fisherman 83 wants miscellaneous. We haven't even spun Fisherman 83. You might get a red X. You're jumping the gun. All right. Hopefully you don't get a red X, but if you do, if you don't, I already know you want miscellaneous. So here we go. Fold this down. All right. You got a one. So let's dig into the miscellaneous bucket. Bam. Zebco Camo Cat 15 pound line. 910 yards. Look at that color. That's pretty cool looking. Camo Cat. <laughs> Fisherman 83. Camo cat line. All right. Nice, nice, nice. All right. We will. Let's do one more question before we start talking about more bass fishing stuff. Let's see what we got here. Is Clint in the house? Hey. Nice. Are you uh are you in uh, Louisville tonight? Is that where uh is that where the PBR is at? Man, Clint, you you missed the steam cheeseburger hat question. 
Yeah, Louisville, Kentucky. They're probably all sad down in uh, Kentucky right now since uh, neither team made it to the uh, tournament very far. All right. Um, question number three. All right, let me, uh-oh, what did I do there? Hmm. Okay. All right, here's uh Here's a question for you guys that follow the tournaments. All right. The elites. The elites fished on Pickwick Lake this week. Right? So, what? Do you think I will ask about the Pickwick tournament that the elites fished? I am going to ask you. I am not going to ask you, Clint Atkins, who won the tournament. But since you put his name up there, Bill Lowen did win the tournament. The question I'm going to ask is, what is Bill Lowen's nickname on the elites? What is Bill Lowen's nickname? Go. Clint jumped the gun and struck out. We will see if he knows what they call him. Oh, Jackson. I think Jackson got it first. Let me go back and make sure I didn't miss anybody. But I think Jackson. Jackson, buddy. You are right. They call him Dollar Bill. Dollar Bill Lowen. <laughs> ah, John Gill. Dude, you're right. They used to call him the Turtle. So I probably would have let that one fly as well. Turtle. But Dollar Bill is what they call him now. So Jackson. Time to spin, buddy. You ready? Here we go. Red X. Two. You got two, Jackson. What do you want? Where you want me to what do you want me to pick from? You want soft plastics, hard baits, miscellaneous bucket? He wants two hard baits. All right. Okay. Here we go. Here's one. I'll just pull two out and then we'll show them both to you. Here's two. Okay. First up, you've got Top Secret Fishing Tackle, Classified. This is the Area 51, which is a jerkbait. And it is Cosmic Dust is the color. Classified Lures. All right. And you also have won a Lucky Strike. Rick Clun Square Bill crankbait. Trying to see if I can see the color on here. That is a sexy shad color, is what that is. Square Bill and a jerk bait, Jackson. Congratulations. Let me write this down before I forget it. Jackson Bettis. That's 
Uh, Dirk Bait and Rick Clun Square Bill. Nice. <clears throat> You're right, Jeff. Good spring baits. Both of them will work fine. I could be wrong, but the hard bait bucket is sounding a little empty. Well, it is more empty than all the rest, Clint. So who knows? We might get down to where we're only we only got two buckets for a while. Who knows? The, the hard bait bucket is about half full. The soft plastic bucket is almost full, so that kind of shows you people want hard baits more than they do soft plastics. All right, Dalen wants to do one more question. Okay. I am going to stay in the theme of uh, the Elite Tournament on Pickwick. I'm going to ask another question about the Elite Tournament at Pickwick. <laughs> okay. Who finished fourth place on the Pickwick Lake Tournament? Fourth place. Yeah, John, there's a lucky craft in there. How about that? A. Joe Fishing got it right. Steve Kennedy was fourth place. That is right. Okay, AJ. Let's let's spin to win. Here we go. One man, you almost got the jackpot. That would have been three lures, AJ. But just missed it. But one is better than zero. So uh, what's your choice, eh, Joe? He wants soft plastic. Okay. Oh, man. This sucker's heavy. Soft plastic. I'm going to go down in there about halfway. Uh-oh. I got two. I got two, so I'll redo that. All right. The Gambler. Seven-inch ribbon tail worm. Nice. I like ribbon tail worms, dude. You, I mean, you need you, fishing tough. You need to figure out how to catch them. Throw your little curly tail or ribbon tail worm, dudes. It will catch them. All right, I'm going to do a bonus question because uh, I've got another Steve Kennedy question. See who can get this right. Gambler, ribbon tail worm. All right, here's the bonus question. Now, this is a subjective answer. There could be many answers to this question, but the only answer that matters is my answer. Mr. Bass, can you ask a bull riding question? <laughs> no, I cannot ask a bull riding question. I know nothing about bull riding. Except I know eight seconds. I know you got to stay on eight seconds. Uh, so maybe you could fill me in on PBR 
trivia, and then I can start asking those questions. All right, so like I said, this is a subjective question. The only answer that counts is my answer, and by the way, my answer is the correct answer. Steve Kennedy came in fourth place. The next question is, what is wrong with Steve Kennedy? That's the question. Clint Adkins, ham radio or electrical question. Oh my gosh, man. These questions are getting out of control. What is wrong with Steve Kennedy? That's the question. Wonderhog says everything. That would be the next, the second correct answer, but that's not the correct answer I'm looking for. Real life nailed it. He spelled Auburn wrong. He's an Auburn fan and an Auburn graduate. Clint, you got it right. He loves the Tigers. That there is no place for an Auburn fan on the Mr. Bass channel. I'm just kidding, actually. If you're an Auburn fan, I'd love to have you. But that is what's wrong with Steve Kennedy. He's an Auburn grad and an Auburn fan. So congratulations, real life. You are the winner. He has left the chat. <laughs> All right. I love the LSU Tigers N5 KDA, except for last year, 2019, when they beat us and we lost our chance and you guys won the national championship. Okay, real life. Let's spin to win. One. Real life. Pick your poison. What do you want to win, real life? Oh, Dalen's a Clemson fan. Dude, I don't know about Clemson. Real life wants a hard bait. Okay. I guess you don't care that my my hard bait bucket's running low. Here it is. It is a topwater plug, the wavelength wave walker in smoke pearl. Black back, white sides with a little bit of yellowish gold on the gill plates. The Wave Walker, the color is called Smoke Pearl. So that is real life. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Okay, what else was I going to talk to you guys about? Um, one thing I was... I've talked to you guys. I think I've mentioned this to you guys before is uh, the old, I was going to talk a little bit about matching the hatch. And this kind of goes back to the question of what's your favorite color. One day I was out fishing uh, and uh, there was a uh, bird that was uh, on the bank and I looked over and there was this uh, crawdad. I've showed you guys this before. This crawdad on the bank. 
it was just a crawdad head. The rest of the body was gone and the pinchers. But this is a, a real live crawdad, as you can see. And it's been on my shelf for about a year now, and it's faded. But when I picked it up, see this pincher area here and here and the head were bright blue. Bright blue. And, uh, Clint, that's a lobster. Remind me not to go out to dinner with you for lobster if you're calling this lobster. Um, so what does that tell you? You got a crawdad, and there was a bunch of these along the bank. Super bright blue here, here, here. What kind of clue does that give you? You, If you're fishing jigs with trailers, you need some blue on it. If you're trying to duplicate or imitate any kind of a lure on the bottom, like a crawdad imitating bait, put some blue on it. Throw some blue baits. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Uh, if you're trying to imitate a crawdad and you're throwing orange or green, well, the fish are going to know that's that looks weird. That doesn't look like that does not look like the crawdads around here. So Mike Iconelli talks about that all the time. Match the hatch, match the hatch, match the hatch. That's what he means. He means to figure out what they're eating in the lake and try to get your. Uh, Try to get your lure to uh, to match that. It doesn't have to match exactly, obviously, but that that color deal, it's the real deal. And sometimes you'd be amazed how much how good that works. Tell me what it tells me V two hundred eight works, John. I got no idea what that question means, unless you're talking to somebody else. Blue cross. There are cross that you can buy that have like just blue tips, blue pincher tips on the cross. That was, uh, there's several pros that really like to throw those blue crawd, uh, cross, blue clawed cross at certain times of the year. Uh, Dalen, did Oral Roberts end up beating Arkansas? I know they were winning. When the when the live stream started, all right. Look at old Eric. He's he's telling you it works. Caught three bass off and on that had red lips. Switched to a red lure and it brought them in like crazy. See, right on. It does work. John Smith V two hundred eight is the blue craw color. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I've got one hanging here. So John uh, Smith, he's a sharp dude. He's saying you could throw a wiggle wart. The V208. Look at that. It's blue. And this color really matches the color that was on those pinchers really well. Good thinking, John. That's a good tip. So you don't even have to throw something that looks like a crawdad. You can throw a crankbait, but if it's got similar colors, they'll still pick up on it. No, they lost. Who lost, Dalen? Did uh, Arkansas lose or Oral Roberts lost? Oral had it. They missed a three. So Oral Roberts lost. So Arkansas won. The SEC is still going, huh? Those Oral Roberts guys, man, they, they beat some tough competition this year, though, for sure. Pretty impressive. And listen, if you're an Arkansas fan, you need some hope. Bad. So it's good that uh, your basketball team's winning right now. 
because those hogs don't have a prayer in football. <laughs> not, a, not a prayer. Holy cow, man. That is a sad lot. All right, we'll do another question here. Mr. Bass, how well do rainbow trout patterns work? They actually work way better than you would think. You do not need a uh, trout in your lake to throw a rainbow trout pattern. If you have trout in your lake, you definitely should be throwing trout patterns, but you can throw tra trout patterns uh, in lots and lots of lakes. In fact, I have quite a few trout colored lures that I will throw um, at certain times of the year. Mr. Bass, where's your roll tide and bee ball? Right on, Terry. I'm all about that. That's one of our que that's one of my questions. In fact, I'll ask that right now. This is the next question. What team is the Crimson Tide playing tomorrow? That's the question. And of course, they will beat them. Who are they playing tomorrow? Nick, you can't you can't win more than one night one time at a night. Neither can you, Fisherman 83. Neither can you, Jackson. Oh, my check. I think my check is the first winner. Because Fisherman 83 was before you, but he's already won tonight. Nick has already won tonight. My check. You are the winner. You are the winner, my check. Congratulations. <laughs> Look at Clint. Clint, you're just answering UCLA now? There's like seven people already answered that. I think I deserve this because I misspelled the last two questions that I knew. You might it might be true, my check. All right, dude. Let's spin for you. Here we go. One. Man, the ones are hitting tonight. Don't know what's up with that. Nothing on that wheel. All right, what do you want? Uh, Ma check. Miscellaneous, hard bait, soft bait. Oh, good strategy, Clint. Just find out who's put the right answer. You go ahead and put it up. And in case they've double dipped, that's not a bad strategy. All right, my check wants a hard bait. Okay. Here we go. What do we got here? The D7 jerk bait. This is a deep diving jerk bait by Warrior Baits. It, uh, let's see, what color is it? Color, this is a great color. It's one of my favorite colors in my tackle box. Color 002. What kind of a lame brain company says the color is number two? I mean, I get it. Yamamoto uses colors for their, the color numbers for their Cinco's, but they also give you Watermelon red. These people, color 002. Jeez Louise. All right, my check. Congratulations, dude. You got color number two. The D7 jerkbait. 
All right, I'm going to ask one more question, Mr. Bass. Call the hogs, and I'll like all your videos. <laughs> Barker Bass, and I am a Bama fan. I am not going to sue E. Calling the hogs in, man. Yeah. I, I'm all for SEC. I pull from a SEC boys, but calling in the hogs. Come on. I mean, there's only so much a, a show host can do, man. Before, before you're just crossing the line. Even, even with the 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 temptation of liking all my videos for the next year, you should like them all anyway because they're all so awesome, right? Right, right on, right on. He wants me to go old suey pig and on him. Hey, bud, what color are you catching them on? I'm catching them on 002 has been the deal for me. That 002, that 002 is just freaking amazing. Saban's under investigation for fishing without a license. Wouldn't surprise me. All right. I got one more question I'm going to ask on the uh, uh, about the elite tournament. I've been asking lots of elite series questions today, but uh, I came up with several of them. All right. This one is about the winner of the elite series tournament on Pickwick Lake. Uh, as you know, Bill Lowen has been in the elites fishing for many years. How many BASS tournaments has Bill Lowen won? That's your question. Jan, Jan, you're the first one to get it right. Because the others that got it right have already won. He has only won one tournament. Pickwick Lake. This was his first win. How about that? His very first win. Unbelievable. He's had quite a few. He's had quite a few uh, top tens, several second place. Uh, I think he's had four or five second place finishes, but he has never won in his whole career. So uh, I am glad that he won finally. That that was pretty awesome. <laughs> See you, Barker. Thanks, man. Appreciate you being on the channel. Appreciate you being in the channel. All right. Um, we need to spin for Jan, don't we? Are you ready to spin, Jan? All right, let's do it. This down. He wants to strike King. Uh, ain't gonna make it. Oh, you got the angel, dude. You get to pick someone else to win too. Let's go with you first, though. What? Uh, what's your? Which? Uh, which one? Uh, what's your choice? Jan wants miscellaneous. All right. Miscellaneous. Okay. Miscellaneous. 
what is going on in this miscellaneous bucket. It is full. There's so much stuff. <laughs> Get a good one, Jan. I'm really stirring it up here. I am mixing this up, stirring it up. I'm trying to see if I can. All right, here we go. Bam. Check it. Check it out. These are not any just ordinary sunglasses. These are John Cruz polarized sunglasses. That's right. How about that? Coming out of the miscellaneous bucket. I'll take it out of the package so you can see what they look like. Wow, pretty impressive. Not a bass lure. That's right, Daniel. You never know what you might get out of the miscellaneous bucket. Was I the only one who thought it was weird looking lure before they realized it was a pair of sunglasses? You never know what will come out of the miscellaneous bucket. That's what I was looking for. I wasn't looking for the sunglasses. I was looking for something that wasn't a lure. And that's kind of the first thing I landed on. So you guys could see. There's actually more in the miscellaneous bucket than just lures. All right, Jan, uh, who did you select to uh, spin? I mean, to win a prize. <laughs> well, there's my wife. She's like, I'm going to dig through that bucket and see what else you got in there. Is Matthew still here? Uh, if so, I choose him because he seems to be having trouble getting his answers in time. <clears throat> Matthew, are you still here? We'll wait a minute and see if he responds. Ah, Fisherman 83, you better not have purses in there because then his wife wants to want to get in there too. You never know what might be in that miscellaneous bucket. Well, uh, we could do that. Um, if you want to pick uh, Matthew, Jan, we could just select a lure for him if he's not on. Or you can pick someone else, whatever you want to do. Just let us know what you want to do. He was on for quite a while, so I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> you got you got a bunch of guys hustling for a prize there, Jan. Oh, dude. She's not kidding about that. Okay, uh, Jan, buddy, we got to have a decision. What are you doing? What are you doing? Did Jan leave too? <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting any responses from Jan either. Matthew left and Jan did too. Okay, Jan is saying outside world gets 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 it. Outside world. 
What's your what's your po pick your poison? What do you want? Looks like outside world tappy, Jan. You made his day. Jan wants the Mick. He wants the Mick bucket. We don't have a Mick bucket. Outside world. Am I going to have to get a Mick bucket now too? What's a Mick bucket? Is it going to have like a chicken McNuggets in or something? Yeah, I think it means miscellaneous. Okay. Miscellaneous. Here we go. What in the world? Is there a person here that I could pull out for outside world? I think there is. It's a Guggen Bates fanny pack. Woohoo! How about that? You didn't think there would be a purse in the miscellaneous bucket? And there was. Congratulations, outside world. You have won a purse. A fanny pack, anyway. A Guggen Bates fanny pack that you can put your tackle in. And take down to the pond. <laughs> Yee! You guys didn't think I had a purse, did you? <laughs> oh, man, that is a great way to wrap up the show. Outside world has won a purse. Fanny pack. <laughs> Oh, man. And it's been in the miscellaneous bucket for about four months now. It's a merce right on, Yeti Whisperer. Dude, you got to love it. You got to love it. All right, dudes, we're at 10 o'clock. It's time for me to go to bed. How about smashing the like button? Share the video. I would greatly appreciate it. Just a reminder, we are doing uh, our uh, next live stream Wednesday night, 6.30. Changing up the time. 6.30 Wednesday night. And I'll be giving away the Monster Bass multi-species box. <clears throat> Go Tigers, right on N5KDA. Have a good night, guys and gals. Appreciate you hopping on. Really appreciate the support. Keep fishing, guys. Keep climbing. Let me know. Be sure you share your pictures of your big fish with me. Uh, Daniel, I think Wednesday is a permanent change. Yes, but I don't know about the time. I may switch the time up. All right. See you guys. Have a good night. I am ending in three, two, one.